today's class is going to be about open and closed gestures. Um, and I, I don't know if some of you, have, you know, if any of you have heard about these. I know you guys have heard of the CSI, um, those three letters used to, to, to help govern the gesture and help you around the gesture. Um, I, I know you've heard about basic shapes and how to use those, but open and closed gestures um, are something that a lot of people don't focus on. And I wanted to focus on them specifically today uh, so that I could, um, you know, introduce them to you so that you can start using them so you can identify a closed gesture versus an open gesture um, whenever you're doing uh, reference work. So when you guys are painting through uh, the use of, you know, pose maniacs, other, other pose sites, you come, you come across a lot of these gestures that are very difficult to draw which are the ones that, you know, there's someone standing and there's someone jumping and there's someone jumping again. Um, a lot of these elongated gestures. These are called open gestures. And the difficulty, the main difficulty with these gestures is the length of the limbs. You get really confused when you want to create the kind of convincing length for all the limbs. Most of you suffer from this and I find that your legs are extremely long and your torso is very short but one arm is unproportionately longer than the next and you guys probably want to create some sort of fighting character or anything that includes very open action. Open gestures, um, let's, try to, let's try to sum them down. They can be standing characters, they can be in, um, an active, uh, which is running, jumping, and any movement that requires an outward force, so anything moving outward, so like attacking, like punching, kicking, these are active um, gestures. <sighs> Static gestures are the ones that are closed, and they're the ones that mostly are not moving. However, sometimes you do have a closed gesture that is in movement um, and you have to learn how to identify which is which. So this is like, you know, anything that is similar to fetal position. So fetal position is a really good way to, to, to identify this. And I did a couple of these sketches for the class advertisement. Um, one of them was an open gesture and one of them was a closed gesture. Let me just show you. Uh, this one. This sketch here is a closed gesture. It's not fetal position, it's not in movement, um, but it is closed. And the reason why it's closed is because the entire... I know you guys have heard of CSI, but no one ever really talks about uh, O. Um, I know o C pretty much covers it up, but I want to express to you the closing point between that one large line. Um, and the closing point is represented perfectly by the O. When I do sketches like these, I have used the C for this one. But when I want to, to, to sort of help you guys figure out the circumference or the area of drawing, I want you guys to start using O. Um, o is a very big one uh, that people forget. It helps you determine what line not to cross and how to. And it helps you remember to keep the gesture inside the parameters of the O. Another big, another big uh, thing that people forget is the standing gesture. I know I represents it, but this is an open gesture. Standing gestures are not closed gestures. A lot of people believe that a standing gesture is a closed gesture. Um, and uh, and I, I pretty much wanted to just show you that. This is a closed gesture, and this is an open gesture. A closed gesture can overlap an open gesture. So actually, let's let's finish making this list. Has anyone come up with a closed gesture? Could anyone imagine what a closed gesture looks like and maybe throw one at me here? So fetal position is one. Um, uh, kneeling is another. Any sort of prayer or prostration. Sometimes there are other, um, like, you know, like child's pose in yoga. This is, a, this is a movement that is used a lot in art. Um, any sort of, uh, you know, movement moving down and uh, sort of kneeling or fighting or leaning towards another fight. Um, stances such as defense and, and raising your, your fists up in front of your head. Any sort of closed 
you know, when you're not moving and the image is pretty much still and there is a, a serious amount of muscle tension, so muscle tension. Um, a baseballer after a throw, that's a good one and that's a very, very important one. And I was just going to get to that. Crossed legs and or arms. Yes, crossed legs. Okay, and what else? Sitting on the toilet. So sitting definitely... <laughs> That's pretty much closed, especially if you haven't had any laxative. Um, go from open to close, brace position, a baseballer after a throw, sitting on a toilet, praying, yes, praying, prayer or prostration, hugging someone's knees. So, yeah, so so crossed legs or arms basically is, is, is considered hugging because everything is leading back. Um, sitting in the corner, so sitting, okay. Something that Saru said, and it's very, very important, and I was just going to get to it. Sometimes these two overlap. Um, these two gestures overlap, open and closed overlap, and when they overlap, you have to identify that. So he said after a baseballer throws something. So an overlapping gesture doesn't necessarily mean one part of it is open and one part of it is closed. You can't have that. You can have it when someone is raising their, you know, like a mountain salute or something in, in yoga. You can pretty much have closed and then open, but it's still considered open because you have the torso to worry about and everything is moving away from the torso. Whether or not the legs are meeting each other back here in the sitting position, they're still technically open. It is st still technically an open gesture. As long as the X, X is the perfect symbol for that, for an open gesture. So everyone write this down. O is for closed gestures. X is for, I mean, oh, sorry, sorry, yes. And X, sorry, I confused the X as in close, which is when you're driving. It's like you can't go through this way. I'm sorry. And X is the open gesture. As long as you see some sort of X going on, this is an open gesture. It's moving out. Everything is moving out, whether or not the legs are sitting. Um, when the legs are sitting in a closed gesture, it means that the entire proximity of the gesture can fit inside a general, albeit morphed, circle. Okay? However, what Saro said, the overlap. The overlap is when you have, let's say, a baseballer just finished with the throw. And what we see is the result of an open gesture leading to a closed gesture. So this open gesture here can be um, sort of called an open gesture, but... At, at the moment, it's it's static. It's not moving. So what happens essentially with this open gesture is that it is somewhere in between the end of an open gesture, so the end of an open gesture, and the start of a closed gesture. And this kind of fluidity or solidity or, or, or stiffness has to be emulated perfectly and beautifully um, in your uh, figure drawing. And how do you do that? How do you get something like that done? You do that by realizing which areas are closed and which areas are open. And it's generally, I believe, in my own belief in, in our practice, that an open gesture is either open or closed. It's not in the middle. But when they overlap, it's either one of them when they overlap. But it's always one, one is always overlapping the other. One is always more than the other. In this case, in this standing gesture, when someone has just finished throwing a baseball, it is an open gesture. I mean, yes, an open gesture. God, these X's and O's are, are um, driving me nuts. Um, when someone has just finished moving, mm, I'm not sure. I can, you know, I can barely come up with some stuff right now. Sorry? When someone, what do you mean when someone has finished moving? Yeah, I know. What do you mean? Yeah. Sorry. Another another uh, specific pose that I'm thinking about for for when the open is more. I mean, when the closed is more is when you are sort of in the middle of a jump forward, and this may be a move that signifies an upcoming open gesture, like let's say a diver, but it is generally a closed gesture because it can still fit in the parameters of a circle. What if it's giving a birth? I'm, I'm really, I really don't know what you guys are saying. Um, 
Next thing that I wanted to say is I wanted to identify sort of which are closed and which are open. So this one's pretty self-explanatory. Is this open or closed? Yes, like the closed gestures usually are used to show negative moods or feeling. That can be used as well, but closed just generally means um, the fact that it is static. This may be depressing right now to you guys because he's very sad or angry or in pain. But what, what I essentially mean, it's just a simple action. There's no emotion involved. There's not much uh, connotations. I'm, I'm not really teaching you the connotations here. I'm just teaching you the technical ways to simplify your uh, figure drawing process. Okay, so this is closed. Nice, Chris. Give me a no. <laughs> um, it is closed for many reasons. When you begin duplicating this sketch, a lot of you just go straight for the muscle or for the gesture line. What I go for is the general, general area. And then I do the gesture line, I do a couple of gesture lines, and then I have everything mapped out for me. And I can just go in and figure out where I want to place all of this. I know I'm tracing here in front of me, but just, just for exam example's sake. Let's look at the next one. Is this open or closed? O shape with the cross legs and arms, very closed. Yes. Is this an open or closed gesture? Closed, okay. Anyone for open? Can anyone defend why this is might might be open? Yeah, Senshi stock, yeah. Mm, legs seem closed to me. Semi, opened, open legs. No one for middle, no one for the overlap. There's nobody going for the overlap. Yeah, there is an overlap, but which one is the which one is the strongest overlap? Which one is taking over? The close or the open of the overlap? semi she's kneeling and her arms up and defending she's not ready to attack closed open overlap open overlap yes blue so she's ready to take a hit so she has just arrived from a movement and is going to go for another movement you can say it's closed because she might be defending she might be static not moving just ready to, to take a blow but the one thing I really want you to understand when I say the overlap the overlap is something that is more interesting than anything else the overlap is when I want you to sh I want you to show me that this character is can be in movement. It may be still, but it can be in movement. This guy doesn't look like he can be in movement. There is a serious stiffness and static, even despite the beautiful um, rendition of the muscles. There is still a huge amount of static energy here that is in, in, unmoving. Is it kinetic or static? I, I miss. Yes, I think. Okay. When we look at something like this, there's it's a very still image. The movement is limited. This, of course, like Lotus said, can lead to more, you know, expressing more depressed feelings, expressing more still feelings. Like there was just one beautiful drawing of someone in a fetal position underneath the ground as if they're a seed. I'm sure all of you have seen it. It's very, very beautiful. It's one of the most famous online uh, paintings. Um, it's like they're a seed and they're ready and they look like roots. It's very beautiful. This is an example of the overlap. Okay? This, I mean, this is not an example of it. This is an example of the overlap where it is has the potential to move. Potential for movement. You can't create a movement like this or a gesture like this without that fluidity here. And you can see you can fit it in a circle but there is somewhat of an X going on, somewhat of an X, that is keeping this image ready, ready for open. It is ready for open. Equals open, O equals closed. Okay? All right? I want to see that you guys are expressing this kind of movement or potential for movement in your gesture drawings. Another one is this right here. 
Baby, can you just turn that off, please? Let's find out which ones are closed and which ones are open in this drawing, in this image here. Okay? We have this one and this one. Let's focus on these. Is this one open or closed? Is gesture based on the point in general or the point of the pose in general or the point of view? I, I believe it's the gesture in general. Gesture is based on the general movement, the general position of the activity. Perspective is simply how you're going to see or divide or present that gesture. You can, you can have the same gesture, the same essential movement, just because you're behind a guy who's kneeling doesn't mean he's not kneeling. He's still kneeling. Just because you're in front of a guy who's throwing a sword doesn't mean that he's not throwing a sword. He's still throwing a sword. Doesn't matter which perspective you're in. Perspective determines the presentation. Which area do you want us to see the throwing of this sword or the kneeling of this character? So a lot of you are saying open for this one. Lemur Buff says um, he has the X. Anyone here for closed? Um, are there poses that can be either open or closed depending on where you are watching? Um, for me, no. I want to build a s serious line in between. A good, very good question. Beautiful question from Michael. Um, he's saying, um, can the X and the O change on a figure drawing if we are looking at it from a different angle. I want to say no. It will stay the same. Again, the gesture is the gesture. The perspective is simply which part of the C we're seeing. And es essentially the circle, the reason why I use it, it's such a powerful tool. It's such a powerful shape because it's a circle no matter which edge you're looking at it. You're looking at it from here or from here. Your camera is facing here. It doesn't matter. It's still going to be closed because it is still, still essentially not ready for movement. If it's not ready for movement, it's not going to be ready for movement at 30 degree angle versus a 90 degree angle of, of uh, camera. Okay? Sure, Niall. I'll send them to you after. Okay? So, a lot of you are saying closed. I'm open for this one. For this one, I say closed. The reason why I say closed is because I can sum up this entire figure here in a circle. There is not much of an X because the X doesn't seem, it would not help me create the static stability that this character has. In fighting, I think this is a bit, um, a bit stiff for actual fighting. This guy seems like he is ready for an attack or is presenting his attack. But he is not necessarily ready for another attack. He has finished the movement, not anticipating another movement. The movement is finished. So it is pretty much closed. It is an overlap. There is definitely an overlap. But which overlap is the strongest? I am saying the closed overlap is the strongest. This, however, is open. It is closed. It is more closed than open. Okay? Closed is winning the battle. Why? Because the, the, the activity is done and he is pretty much stable. His position is stable, is stiff. You can, you can represent this entire position through a very closed shape. The X is there, but the X is an, isn't an X of movement. And this is where you have to learn the overlapping movements, the overlapping poses. Just think of it like this. Poses where there is an overlap are the most interesting poses of all. I find this pose more interesting than this pose or this pose. This pose is very, very art friendly. It's a beautiful display of muscles and muscle tension. Remember the muscle tension I was talking about here? And it's beautifully st stabilized by his position and his legs everything closed together. The arm may be sticking out, but there is more in the circle than outside of the circle. So there's no X moving outward. There is no activity moving outward. There is no outward force. It's an inward force, a stability, a strength. Like, um, like you know, in Kung Fu, that tiger, I don't know, it's not tiger, it's like horse. I don't think there's horse. But, um, but you guys know what I'm talking about here? 
This, of course, is an open gesture. It may not have an X to it, but it is open because I can't sum up this entire fluidity of her movement with a circle. It's a C, an S, or an I. C, S, or I all mean open. O means closed. Okay? That's it. It's a very, very, very basic distribution, understanding, theory, to take all of the gesture difficulty and the difficulty that comes with understanding gesture. It's a very good way of remembering it. You mean their action is done, and does that count for every type of image, like a rule? Technically, I want it to. I want it, especially for those who are starting out. The more you work, the more you're going to find um, uh, that you can, you can break some of these rules. Um, such as overlapping, but people who, who overlap are doing it accidentally. They don't understand that they're overlapping a, a finished movement and an anticipated movement, or a closed gesture versus an open gesture. Um, yes, that's why uh, she is an O. She is an O. I mean, she is an X, sorry. She is an open movement here. But she will still be open moving, not stiff. If you look at her from the swordsman position, she will, she will be a kind of X position, though. Exposition. No, one of them is closed, one of them is open. Remember, it doesn't matter about the perspective. The movement is exterior from the... This guy's position, what Alec, Jacob is saying, is that she is an X. She is, can be summed up by a C and an I. Or C and an I. Okay? Overlap is when I... Um, what I'm trying to explain let's say I am punching the wall me ready to punch the wall when my arm is like let's say I'm ready to punch a wall like okay and this is the wall this is an open gesture the movement is exterior moving away from the image moving away from the center of gravity let's say this is the center point the X is easily per found the X doesn't mean the arms and legs, by the way. It doesn't necessarily mean the arms and legs. It means the outward movement, the outward force. Force. Okay? Movement outward. Whenever you're in movement, you're moving out. When you're walking, that's movement. You're moving outward. Your arms are moving ahead of you. Your legs are moving behind you. You're moving in all kinds of directions. When you're jumping on a trampoline, you're moving outward. When you're attacking with a sword, when you're slashing a sword, you're moving outward. And in order to move an outward position that strong, the legs have to be supported. The legs are most of the time separated to maintain a certain degree of balance. Um... My sound is gonna cut. It's cutting out. Gonna refresh the page. So I'm gonna wait for the sound to fix up. Anyone else having technical difficulties? Not. Um, Matias okay. Maria is okay. Okay. When it, when when I am done the movement and I have punched the wall, and my arm is close to my face and the wall is broken, my legs are tucked together again. This leg is used to support this leg to create the movement and give the movement momentum. So another word that you should be writing is momentum. When the movement is done and the force is met and the force has been e removed, extruded, whatever, we turn back into a closed gesture. Open is like a single frame of the movement. Yes, you're capturing the movement in action. When the movement is done, it is very easy to summarize the movement with a closed gesture, a circle, a circle with a little bit sticking out of it. Someone asked if a open gesture overlap is when something leaves the circle. Yes, that is a very good clue to help you determine them. Yes, when you bring your body back towards you. Exactly. All right. So is everyone on the same page? Does everyone understand the difference between an open and closed gesture? Let me get some water. Lying down, let me, um, let me let you guys answer that. Flat like a toothpick. What do you think? The key is movement, momentum, muscle tension, and force. It's closed. Movement momentum, muscle tension, and force. I, I recommend you write that down. 
movement, muscle tension, momentum, and force. They all can be summarized by a big fat X. Movement is the actual activity. Muscle tension, you'll know that muscles need to be used here, so there should be certain areas in the body that you have to stress muscle um, tension in. Stressed up muscles means flexed muscles. So muscle tension means flexed. Momentum is the fact that there will be a movement coming up. There is going to be a large movement coming up. Force, essentially the power of the movement. What kind of movement is it? Is it going to be a sword slash? Is it going to be a walk in the park? There's a difference in the amount of, uh, of movements to represent. Is it a punch? Difference between a punch and walking. Jacob asked Estebrak, so why is it important to be able to identify this? Figure is the same whether we know it closed or not. That is the biggest issue. Um, not being able to identify the kind of movement it is, which is essentially what close and open is all about, is um, is uh, one big issue that a lot of artists face. And their art always looks stiff, and they don't know where to give the stiffness. Closed images or closed gestures always maintain that stiffness. Not really stiffness, but unmoving, almost like dead. But, um, but... The reason essentially why you have to learn this is because you have to start categorizing. The more organized you are in any field of study, the easier it will be to break down that field of study and master it. These, the CSI, XO, whatever, is all about figuring out shortcuts around it. I mean, you don't have to use them. No one has forced you to use CSRI. But the highest, well-known professionals use them. A lot of teachers have taught through them, and a lot of students have learned through them. And the closed and open gestures haven't really been taught. And a lot of the people who want to create a closed gesture, like someone sitting down with their back twisted, always look a bit too fluid, a bit too active, considering the fact that it is a rested, flat position, horizontal position, usually... Um, uh, with very relaxed muscles overlapping each other, like the buttocks isn't stressed out, the, 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 I mean flexed, the thigh muscles aren't flexed to help support the flexed buttocks, which is supporting the back, which is going to you know, create the momentum for a punch. All of this is important because it'll help you understand, and this is the next bit here, which muscles are being used. Muscles are being used. And that, Jacob, is figure drawing. Figure drawing is all about the figure, which is all of the stuff that I just told you, X, C, S, X, Y, O, C, S, I, X, O, what the heck did I just say, S, X, Y, what the fuck, sorry. Um, and the fact that all those four momentum, movement, force, and uh, the other thing are, sorry, movement, force, muscle tension, all of these are required because you have to know which muscle is being used, which muscle area is the strongest. In every figure drawing, there is a muscle that is stressing the entire image, that is pulling the image into itself. So which muscle in this image here should we have learned how to do? Which muscle here is one of the biggest, most beautiful part of this drawing? Mm. What is keeping this image closed? What is closing this image? What is acting like a border? The arm. This whole arm area. This is something that this artist here realized. Or when they, when they, when they use the reference, they realized this while they were looking at the reference. This whole arm movement here, the fact that he created it as if it's moving down away from us. And the fact that the legs don't have much muscle tension. Do they look like they're tensed or stressed? Not really. All the fat collection. Do you guys see this? Another signal of closed is fat collection. The fat collects at a certain degree. Somewhere there is fat collection going on. Somewhere there is some sort of... Uh, not all of them have this, but it's a very good signifier that there is a tension or a pulledness or a collectedness or a, or a, um, a bundling up of the human body. Okay? Fat <laughs> collect fat. 
All right, do you guys understand what I'm saying? When you're drawing this and you want to be able to create or emulate this kind of closed movement, this is the muscle that is involved. This is the whole muscle system, all the way from the trapeze lateris, I don't know what they're called, all the way up to here, into the biceps, triceps, and into the forearm. All of these areas are active muscles creating, not active muscles, but muscles assisting the closedness of this gesture. They're not active, but they're active in the closed way. In this image, the muscles that are mainly being used, though she is not very muscular, so we wouldn't be able to see this, this is a tense muscle here. Her thigh is keeping her upward. Have you ever guys tried to do one of these, one of these stances? You'll feel it in your thighs, definitely. Anywhere where you're squatting or sitting down, it sort of really, really represents the tenseness of the muscle. So you could look at this tenseness here, look at the tenseness here, the leg muscles here. These areas seem to be pretty relaxed. Anything that requires a fluid movement, like, you know, raving a baton or holding a sword or having a ribbon, whether or not it's heavy, um, will have a relaxed muscle. I see this area here as the muscle area that I have to focus on that keeps this image half closed, half open. Or more closed, more open than closed. This one here, the muscles used in this one to keep this image closed, the tenseness here, or the muscle tension here and here, keeping this image closed with a degree of parameter. More closed than open, though it is open in a certain degree. Would a closed gesture also be like a relaxed pose, like plopping over a chair? Yes. Again, the end of a movement. That is when it's closed. You have to represent the relaxation of the muscle, the end of the movement. There is no longer any momentum to represent. This biggest, the reason why I'm here is because some of you are drawing people who are running that don't look like they're running. Some people are drawing people who are sitting that don't look like they're sitting. You still confuse the fact that there is no activity here. There is no active movement. It's just ending. There's no more momentum, no more muscle required, no more muscle tension required. It's just pretty much relaxed. He is in a closed gesture, but it, it is a degree open. This is another one of those overlap that I told you about that's very interesting to draw. This area here, this one here, is a closed, also open gesture. It's very tricky with fighting because any fighting scene, they're a bit open and a bit closed because they're at the end of a movement, ready to go for another movement. At the end of the movement, ready to go for another one. So that's what fighting is. You constantly keep on going back and forth between open and closed. So you have to know at which gesture you're at between in this in this battle here that you're drawing for your comic book or for your illustration. You have to know which one is closed, which one is open, and where to show the true tension of the muscle. And I don't know if you guys have watched people attacking each other on slow-mo in movies or something, but if you focus, you see all of the pressure and the force lead back up into the arm. Let's say you're having a, you're drawing an ogre and he's smashing the ground with his big hammer, and um, you watch this in video. You see how the force goes into the ground and then goes back up his arms and shakes his muscles around, and his face shakes and everything shakes because the force has been met, the force ended, and that kind of uh, position is a closed position. Okay, this one here is an open position. Very open. So it is at the end of a movement, she is still in that sort of X outward force, outward force, outward force, outward force. Okay? This one here, is this closed or open? Can anyone tell me? Or is it an overlap? <laughs> the force. Lazy says open. Anyone else for open? Overlap, Tanithal, open, Matia, Nimish, open, open, overlap, overlap, closed, 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 closed. Closed overlap. It isn't moving. Exactly. It is a closed overlap. Closed overlap because essentially there might be a certain degree in the pose of acting or some sort of, some sort of, you know, fat, like, you know, like a, like a exhibitionist kind of position showing off your sword, anything for like an MMORPG game where you're showing the character selection screen and you have to draw something for them and they're asking you, okay, give me something that she wasn't really an attack, but she's kind of looks strong. This technically means that they want you to have a, a standing pose, but somewhere in the, in, in, that has the potential for movement. 
this has absolutely no potential for movement. There is, a, of course, a potential for movement. If you were to breathe live into this, probably see it breathing, probably roll around and start writhing in pain, because, I don't know, he lost the game against those... Anyways, and this person here seems like they are, they do have a potential for movement, but it is a closed, a closed gesture. But it is confusing, because you do see the X. And you do have all of these muscles involved in the standing position. So when you do with images like these, what we have is a balance. And this is when you have part of it closed and part of it open. And these are the most difficult to draw, at least for me. The ones that are active, I can just usually use a big C movement you know, help me create the, the punch, make sure I have sizes to help with the foreshortening, and make sure I have, you know, all of that necessary stuff from drawing Superman, punching some guy in the face, and the guy falling back this way. And he's like, meh, help me. But with this character here, there's two areas that are closed and two areas that are open. And nothing is against that, though I do don't, I don't like saying that an, an, a figure can be either. When it comes to an image like this, to simplify your artistic process, divide the image into two parts where the gesture is half open and half closed. You'll need muscles to be able to express this. Of course this is a bit more closed than open. There is no potential movement though th there is no movement currently or, or uh, momentum for movement but it is technically it has the possibility to move so it's somewhere in the, in the very very you know very midpoint. Alright if you were to draw an X to show the movement how would it look? I wouldn't draw an X to show this movement. This movement is confusing movement because when you guys draw this, you're going to be like, okay, the head and then the body and then the shoulders and then, okay, and then I've got, okay, and then I've got the legs. And you're probably going to create some sort of active movement here. But still, there's certain closeness about it. There, there's no X. Moving, moving outward. There's no outward movement. Only in here and here, and that's to help the closed position. To help it stand. It's a standing closed position. And that's when it's... It is, it is closed, like I said, but it is a standing closed position. Meaning there is an X in here, but part of an X. Though I don't like saying it's either half or half, it is closed. And that's that. Supported by an open gesture because the force is moving down into the ground helping keep her up against gravity pushing her back up standing gestures are like that standing gestures are the hardest gestures because what happens is that you have to represent the pull force and the push force remember like I told you in first class push and pull and then anything that the arms do you have to summarize those up together the reason why I talk about this as if it's closed is because I can summarize this as one big chunk or one big trunk like I told you guys the leg area, if I'm having trouble with the leg area, or representing the thighs in the leg area, because it is a closed movement, so there's not much um, muscle to show, or muscle movement to show, or force, or muscle um, uh, flexing. So what I usually do in movements and in gestures like these to help me with the gesture, I just create a simple square to help create the area, and keep the image, or emulate the image's closeness. Okay? Okay, let's go to this one. Which one of these is closed? Does anyone know which one of these cute kids is closed? Closed gesture. None of them are closed. None. Middle. Middle is closed, Moonset? Anyone else for closed? For open? Closed. Open, why would they be closed? The one to the left left on the right she seems on the way down it's not about the way down it's not about the way up it's about the gesture moving when I talk about movement I don't mean movement up or down I mean movement out from the middle force of the stomach imagine the X here the movement is coming from here does everyone understand me when I say the X is created out of the center point. 
this guy here, he's got absolutely no, mo no force. All of the force isn't going outward from his stomach area here. Damn it. Fucking Photoshop. The, the, the force goes back and starts rotating on itself, which is why I showed you the spiral. Because a closed gesture like this fetal position here, the force doesn't move outside like these guys, where the movement is moving from their bellies outward. All of them are open, none of them are closed. They're all open, there's a force ex extruding from their center points here, here, and here. Their center of mass, their center of gravity, their force, their chi, their whatever, chakra. Okay? Does everyone understand that? If the figure is in movement, it's open. If it's not, it's closed. Yes. Yes, lazy. All right. Sometimes if it's in movement, it looks like it is closed. Most of the time, it's not. Sometimes it will be. It is your job as the artist to identify this. And know when areas are closed and when areas are open so that the, so that the figure you're drawing is believable. So you're saying a figure, a closed figure can't move. Well, I've been saying that for this whole time. Um, closed figures are mo cl figures where the movement is done. Figures that look like there is a movement coming up are half and half. And, I've, and, I, and, I, and I told you about there's not, it's not just black and white. There is a gray area. Definitely there's a gray area with everything in the world. And I, I can't summarize this only in open and closed because your drawings are going to look either too stiff or too fluid. Um, so, uh, so when when a when a character is done, I mean, what is movement? Like I said, movement is moving from inside here, pushing outward. So when the person is walking, their legs are moving outside of the force here and here, and their arms are moving out. I mean, their arms are moving out and their legs are moving out. When a person is walking, when a person has just finished like a pirouette, like those crazy ballet ones, the force is moving this way and this way to create an X or like a you know an X. If the person's flexible, it's just it's a good thing. So to use the theory, it is important to identify the open poses so that we can go into detail with the tension of the appropriate muscles. Thank you, Jacob. Very beautiful. I also want it I wanted to help you develop the fluidity. This is all all of this, everything I've said right now, every single thing I've told you, is about planning. Planning your figure drawing. Plan like you've never planned before. The more you plan the more meditation, the more pre-meditated strokes that you anticipate, and the more you think about all the, all the tools that you will need, the better the outcome will be. Okay? The more you plan, the less you do. Yes, the more, like, like uh, you, know, you know, stroke economy. If you guys know where you're going to do, you don't have to use strokes to mistake your way through a drawing, drawing, which is something I do a lot, um, you're going to be mistaking yourself. You make, you know, going to use the control Z a lot. You're going to be erasing lines. You're going to be confused. And I'm telling you this because I do it. I know firsthand what it's like not to plan. Um, and when you don't plan, um, <clears throat> you get, you know, let's say you're trying to draw this guy throwing a sword, and I'm not going to plan here. I'm not planning. I'm just going to be, look at these strokes, look at how garbage these strokes are, because I'm not even thinking about, what to do with, with I don't even know what I'm doing, because I'm not planning, I'm making mistakes, going back and forth, it's this chicken scratch here, but when you plan an image, um, give yourself the C, the X, make sure it's an open, Let's say it's foreshortening. I'm going to leave a lot of time to finish this one perfectly. But an open gesture in the middle of the air. Actually, this is a bit closed. In the middle of the air. Or ready to attack. Or slash. And there's like the slash coming. This is an open gesture. And the planning that I, that I, sorry, that I bring in into this drawing helps me govern the kind of anatomy I want to create. Know which muscles are being tensed here and here, which muscles are keeping it, this arm area here, 
And let's say she's holding some sort of spear or some shit. And... Or she's kicking with this leg. <laughs> I'm not really sure um, what I'm, you know, what, what Kung Fu is all about. I'm not really here to teach Kung Fu, but do you guys understand what I mean? It will help you plan. It's all about the planning, knowing if the gesture is a moving gesture or a static gesture. Um, <clears throat> and um, <laughs> 2013. Um, does everyone understand what I'm saying? I spent 45 minutes sort of explaining what this is all about here. I hope I've gotten to the point. I can go for another 45, but I have to do a buttload of critiques. I hope I, I, I covered it. Yep, any questions at all? This is to help you when you do figure drawings. If you, you guys can't, can't go to a class and say, make me a better figure drawer. Um, you guys have to do this practice on your own. What I teach you are clues and tips to help you in your figure drawing process. You guys can't learn without practice. Forget it. If you guys are here to make me sort of, you know, put a bunch of energy in your brain and open your brain and put a bunch of information about figure drawing in it and close it and say, draw me something good and you do, that's not going to happen. A lot of people naively na naively think that this is tr the truth. These are hints, guiding points, identifications, labels, um, all these different nomenclatures about, um, nomenclature, I guess, about um, figure drawing and how to summarize and how to approach a figure. So it doesn't look so daunting, it doesn't look so difficult, and it makes the process a lot easier and helps your development go by a lot faster.